In this video for section 5.2, we're going to talk about the binomial distribution. We use the binomial distribution in situations where there are only two possible outcomes. Sometimes we call these success and failure. The number of trials and probability of success are fixed, and these things are going to be given to us in the problem. So we're going to use Minitab to calculate probability values for binomial distributions. We're going to look at example 5.4. It says a major airline believes that 80% of its customers favor changing from assigned seating to choosing seats on a first-come, first-served basis. A random sample of 20 customers is taken. What is the probability that 12 or fewer customers like the proposed change? So we are given two pieces of information here. 80% is a probability, and 20 customers is n, or a number of trials. And what we want to know is the probability that 12 or fewer customers like the proposed change. So we're going to go to Minitab. Now this is a little bit different than what we've done in Minitab previously because we're not going to be using the spreadsheet part of Minitab at all. What we're going to do is go to Graph and then go to Probability Distribution Plot. Now make sure that you're not clicking on Probability Plot but you're clicking on probability distribution plot. That's a keyword. Then you're going to select view probability. Now I'm going to change this from normal to binomial and enter my number of trials and event probability that were given to me in the problem. So the problem says probability is 80% and my number of trials is 20. Event probability is always going to be a number between 0 and 1 because it's a probability. Now I'm going to click on Options. And what I'm looking for here is a specified x value. So I'm going to select that. The tail that I select depends on what I'm looking for in my question. So I want to know the probability that 12 or fewer customers like the proposed change. So um, if the question is asking for some number or fewer, that's going to be a left tail. A given number or more is going to be a right tail. We won't use equal tails and middle. You would use for anything that is between two numbers or exactly one number. So you can think of this as being on a number line. Bigger numbers are to the right, smaller numbers are to the left. So 12 or fewer that would be 12, 11, 10, 9, etc. I would choose left tail. And my x value would be 12 because 12 is the largest number that would be considered 12 or fewer. Now, for these binomial problems, you're going to want to refer to the PDF file that contains the instructions, um, which contains some examples here to help you choose the correct tail and the correct number to put in the x value box. For binomial problems, um, the correct number to put in the x value box can be a little bit tricky because, for example, for less than 6, you have to put a whole number in the box, and less than 6 does not include 6. The largest whole number that could be less than 6 is 5, and so you would enter 5 in the box. So read through these carefully and make sure that you're choosing the correct situation that matches the problem. So I'm choosing left tail and x value of 12. Then I click OK and click OK again. And what I'm looking for is the red shaded area of the graph. So the red shaded area, I see here this is 12, and then I have everything shaded to the left of 12, or less than 12, which is what I want. The answer to the problem is uh, written above the red shaded boxes. So this 0 0.03214, that's the answer. Generally, in the homework questions, they're going to ask you to round to four digits after the decimal point, so that would be 0 0.0321 for this question. So if this were a homework question, I would write my answer of 0 0.0321. So that's how you find a probability if the question is asking you for a probability. To find expected value in standard deviation, we're not going to use Minitab, we're going to use formulas. And the formulas are pretty simple. If we want to find expected value, 
we just multiply n times p, or sample size times probability of success. So in this same scenario with our 80% who favor the change and a random sample of 20 customers, if I want to find the expected number of customers who will like the change, I would multiply n times p. My n here, my sample size is 20, and my probability is 80%. I need to convert the probability to a decimal, so 0 0.80, and then multiply those, and I would get 16. So I would expect that 16 customers would like the proposed change out of a random sample of 20, if I know that 80% favor the change. That makes sense. And then lastly, we're going to calculate a standard deviation. So to calculate a standard deviation, the formula is only slightly more complicated, it's square root of n times p times q. n is sample size, p is probability, and q is calculated by doing 1 minus p. So for this, again, the same situation, my n is 20, my p is 80%, and my q, I would do 1 minus 0 0.80, so q would be 0 0.20. And so to calculate the standard deviation, I would take the square root of n, which is 20, times p, 0 0.80, times q, 0 0.20. And if I do that on a calculator, I would find my standard deviation is 1.7889. So this is how you calculate the standard deviation for a binomial situation, the expected value for a binomial situation, and the probability for a binomial situation.